What's up everybody, Gary Simon here. So today we are going to have another episode where I revamp in time-lapse format three user submitted designs. Now, the one thing that these all have in common is that they are contact forms. And I see at least half pe of people get contact forms wrong during my live UI UX review shows. So we're just gonna go ahead and improve them in terms of layout and also usability. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. But wait one second, you're about to watch me improve three user interface designs, but you yourself may not be a great UI designer. And that's why you need to take my UI design bootcamp from the sponsor of this video, scrimba.com. At scrimba, you don't just watch videos. No, 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 you're actually able to modify code in the browser while you learn. My course on UI design features over 100 lessons that are specifically tailored to help you become an awesome UI designer, and they're packed with interactive challenges. So click the very first link here in the YouTube description to access my course along with many others for a very low monthly fee. Here's the first contact form design, which suffers from a number of issues that can be remedied in a relatively easy fashion. First, I choose to left align the contact me title as I'm not a big fan of starting the title on the second column. Next, I start working on a form and the form has a couple major issues. It doesn't need the placeholder values. These types of form elements that are for name, email, and message are rather self-explanatory. Additionally, it's very cluttered because the placeholder text is quite dark, which competes for way too much attention against the label itself. Now, another thing I don't need is the subject input field. I don't feel a subject serves any significance on a contact form. Whatever needs stated can be addressed in the message box, and this also reduces friction. It's one less thing the user has to fill out. Next, I choose to place the additional content on the right column instead of making it on the left column. The form is the most important, therefore I feel it should be placed on the left. Finally, I use the same icon designs uh, on this section, but I decide just to align them a little bit better. And then finally, I decide to add a colored column just to give the layout a little bit more structure. For this entry, it's lacking a few small things that can result in really big improvement. The first thing I decided to do is take that purple middle row and extend it to 100% of the design. It being cut off on the left and right just makes it feel incomplete. The next issue is there's not enough white space inside of the white container that contains the form content. One of the easiest ways to kill a design is a lack of white space. Additionally, the purple labels, which I'll assume are floating labels and not just placeholder values, are suffering from a lack of white space on the left. You want equal white space from the top, bottom, and the left. The purple text color doesn't work well either against the gray input field backgrounds, so I decided to make the backgrounds white and use a border around the text input fields instead. Their call to action button wasn't too bad, but the icon inside of them was too large, so I adjust this. Now, for the fun of it, I decided to prototype a floating label interaction. Remember, you don't want to use placeholder values in place of actual labels. At the very least, use a floating label and ensure it's still accessible. This next design suffers from a lot of design issues, so let's see if I can address them while still maintaining the same general layout and colors. I really feel that the top nav bar color being slightly off color from their background doesn't really work well, so initially I keep it the same color as the background, which simplifies the design. Now next, they have major issues with color and white space inside of their form container. It's pretty much impossible to get medium gray to work well when it's sitting on top of a colored background. Eventually, I end up addressing this issue, but remember, when you try to mix colors, they really need to complement and contrast with each other. Mm -hmm. 
Next up, their social media icons. Being placed very strangely and not using identifiable logos really throws off the design. So I decided to use some predefined social media icons, but instead of just having three social media icons with no other context, I also add some other text-based content as well. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. Give me a suggestion down in the comments below if you'd like to see another one of these, perhaps on another you know, section of a layout or whatever. Let me know what you think. I will see you all soon. Make sure to subscribe and goodbye.